Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and uh, begin with uh, reciting the Namo Tassa and the three refuges for those who'd like to join. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Samma Sambuddhasa Buddhang Saranangachami Dhammang Saranangachami Sangang Saranangachami Dutiampi Buddhang Saranangachami Dutiampi Dhammang Saranangachami Duty Ampi Sangang Sarananga Chami Tati Ampi Buddhang Sarananga Chami Tati Ampi Dhammang Sarananga Chami Tati Ampi Sangang Sarananga Chami So welcome, friends, to this uh, Wednesday evening Dhamma discussion and uh, meditation practice. So uh, this week I sent out a, a sutta, a kind of a little, not a well-known sutta, but a, a sutta to review this weekend. And it's a sutta from the uh, Anguttara Nikaya, Book of the Tens. And it's about, uh, it's entitled, the, the Ten Great Questions. And these uh, questions, uh, the story behind it, I'm just going to uh, tell the story behind it. Uh, for those who may not have read the uh, attachment I sent out, that some of the, the Buddha's disciples were going out uh, and visited some ascetics from other uh, groups, some uh, wandering ascetics uh, in other uh, forest camps to have some uh, discussion that, that often happened, that these monks, groups of different monks with different teachers would uh, visit each other and ask Dhamma questions. So these uh, a group of the Buddhist disciples went to this uh, group of wanderers and then the wanderers asked them, they said, oh, your, your teacher, Gautama, you know, he, uh, he teaches how to, you know, he asked them these questions and uh, the, their teacher, uh, the Buddha tells his disciples to directly know all things, m meditate and having directly known all things, uh, well, that's what uh, we teach our disciples too. So uh, it basically means, you know, directly knowing all things and through meditation. So that's what they teach their disciples. And uh, then the, the mendicants went back to the Buddha and, and uh, you know, told him about this. And then the, the Buddha asked them to, he said, when wanderers of other faiths say this, you should say to them uh, these questions. And then he, he asked, these are, quest these are the questions that the, the Buddha was telling his disciples to ask these monks, because these monks wouldn't be able to answer uh, the questions. And so what is the one thing? What are the two things? What are the three things? What are the four, five, six, seven, eight, and the nine things? And when the monks asked those other monks these questions, they would be stumped and they would be perplexed and they wouldn't know how to answer. And the Buddha says that's because it's beyond their 
their knowledge to answer those questions. And only somebody like the Buddha or the Buddha's disciples or one who has heard it from the Buddha's disciples would be able to answer uh, those questions. So that's kind of the, you know, the backdrop of this, of this particular sutta. And then, so what is the one thing? That's the first question. What is the one thing? And the answer is, all sentient beings are sustained by food. It means all beings require food in order to exist with human beings, animals, devas, uh, you know, any uh, beings that have senses, they, they are live through uh, food. And then becoming completely disillusioned, dispassionate and freed regarding this one thing, seeing the limits of being dependent on food and fully comprehending the meaning, uh, a person who meditates in the right way makes an end to suffering in this very life. So that was the first question. Uh, and if one really truly understood the meaning of that, that all beings uh, are dependent on food, exist on food. And then in one of the next questions coming up, the Buddha explains what are the four kinds of food. But we've, before, the, before we get to that, I know this sound may, may sound a little bit, you know, confusing, but again, you know, back in the day in the Buddha's time and so on, when, when people, where there was just really teachings by mouth, word of mouth and so on, oral teachings. Uh, and they were, you know, you know, had particular styles of teaching, or at least the Buddha did anyway. So, the first thing is all beings are sustained by food. We have to eat physical food. I'll be talking more about that in a moment. And then what are the two things? And the answer is name and form. In the whole world of experience, there's just two things. There's name and form or mind and matter. And our existence is made up of experiences of name and form. That means our senses recognizing forms and the mind giving them a name. And I've given talks on this before. Uh, the name and form, of course, we have this physical body, but it needs the mind to, to operate this physical body. So the name is the mind. And uh, that the name and form is comprised of the five aggregates, which is another question that we'll get to in a minute. So I'm not going to elaborate on that now. But so the answer to that question, what are what are the two things? Name and form in the whole universe, things exist because of name and form. That means the physical form and the mind that's giving them their uh, their qualities, giving them their uh, existence, which includes a consciousness. So again, if that seems a little bit abstract or bizarre, uh, just uh, kind of bear uh, with it for, until we get to these uh, other groups, okay? So then the third question is, what are the three things? And that should be more familiar to most of you. Uh, the three kinds of feelings. That means pleasant feeling, painful feeling, and neutral feeling. That everything we experience is either experienced in one of these ways that produces a pleasant feeling, a painful feeling, and a neutral feeling. And that's what triggers off all of our thoughts and actions based on these uh, feelings that we get uh, attached to. And then what are the four things? Each time with each of those, uh, you know, groups, like the two things and the three things, 
becoming completely disillusioned, dispassionate and freed regarding name and form, regarding feelings, seeing the limits of them, fully comprehending their meaning and how they cause suffering, the person makes an end of suffering. And that is through, of course, developing the four foundations of mindfulness and, uh, you know, disentangling the mind. Now we come to the fourth one. What are the four things? So this is in which he's explaining the four foods. So the first question was all sentient beings are sustained by food. Now, what are these four foods? Now that's the fourth question, the four foods. And those are material food, coarse and fine. So to support these physical bodies. So, you know, we all eat food, right? And if you don't eat for more than a few weeks or so, the body would die of uh, starvation because it needs uh, material food uh, to exist. But that's not the only kind of food. That's food for the material body. But there's three types of food for our mind. And that is the contact, volition, and consciousness. So those are the, the three mental foods, contact. That means we crave contact with the senses. Now, if a baby was born and all of it didn't have any senses and it wouldn't hear anything, see, smell, or taste anything, basically it would remain a vegetable and it would die quite quickly because it wouldn't develop, the brain wouldn't develop. Uh, and it, that's how the baby's brain is developed. It starts to hear language. And then the mother and father teach it language. That's daddy, that's mommy, that's kitty, that's, uh, you know, everything it contacts, it learns a language. And then it, uh, they produce the feelings uh, uh, in it. So, and that's why we crave uh, to, to experience the world. We have the craving. Uh, to see, smell, taste, touch, uh, and even think about th things. And that's what grows the, the mind and, and the body too. But especially the mind. The mind would, the brain wouldn't develop without those foods of contact. Then volition, volition is the karma. And then the consciousness. So those three foods. Uh, and then the, the volition, which is the creation of karma and the habits. Uh, these are which drive the mind and create more desire and aversion and craving and grasping and so on. Uh, is that the volitional, uh, the volitional activities. And then the consciousness, that means the ego consciousness, we keep feeding uh, the ego, the sense of I needs these contacts and uh, feelings and contacts and volition for the sense of self to maintain itself. So uh, in the, that, that craving to be conscious, even though we might sleep and be kind of unconscious during the night uh, and have dreams and people might enjoy their dreams, but <laughs> You know, if they stayed in a dream state their whole life, they would, the body would eventually die. So anyway, uh, those are the three foods, the mental foods, contact, volition, and consciousness. So now, the reason why the Buddha chose these is because the, uh, the wanderers of other sects, especially the ones that Buddha was familiar with, their teachers would not be able to explain these things to them. Uh, because mostly they teach about just uh, attaining formless jhanas and so on, and they don't, there are other teachers of other sects, uh, you know, didn't teach them about the intricacies of the mind, and that's why they wouldn't be able to answer uh, those questions. Okay, so, so far we've covered for the four uh, questions. And then the fifth one, what are the five? Now, this one most of you will be familiar with, the five aggregates. And basically, we've already been talking about them because uh, that includes the, you know, these, basically the, 
you know, feelings, perceptions, volition, and consciousness in the material body. But anyway, those are the five aggregates that we grasp. So, you know, other teachers didn't teach about the five aggregates. They, their teachers wouldn't know how to explain it to them. Uh, and they just, uh, when, when they're asked about it, they would split hairs and, you know, evade the question. And anyway, they wouldn't know how to answer. So, only the Buddha was skilled in really explaining the intricacies of the body and mind, because that is where our life, you know, we live our life in the body and mind and reacting to the body and mind and the world and how it operates. So, you know, the Buddha is explaining these things because that's the essence of his teaching, the, the essence of suffering, how we cause ourselves suffering by not understanding uh, how the body and mind exist on these foods and, and uh, are all bound up in the five aggregates. So, uh, then the sixth one is the sixfold sense sphere. Uh, of the eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, and mind. And we've already talked about these things, so I'm not going to go on. I'm just saying that these are the questions, uh, those six questions, the, the important questions of life, uh, which you know, if you went down to, uh, you know, anybody standing out in front of Walmart or Home Depot or uh, the supermarket and, you know, ask somebody, you know, about these four questions, no one would be able to explain them to you. They think you're crazy or something uh, because they're not skilled in the Dhamma. Uh, so anyway, so the sixth question is, is what is the six are the six sense fields? And that is the eye and the objects of eye and eye consciousness. And uh, the same with the other senses, the ears, nose, tongue, body, and even the mind with their corresponding objects and the corresponding uh, consciousness, hearing, seeing, smelling, tasting, touching, and mind consciousness. Uh, and that is the all. Our whole life and world is made up of just moments of hearing, seeing, tasting, smelling, touching, and thinking. And those are also the five aggregates. So the, all the aggregates and those six senses, they're all part of the same package of mental experience, but it's just different ways of uh, reflecting on them and seeing how they keep the mind bound in the cycle of, you know, craving, grasping, becoming, and, uh, you know, uh, accumulating karma and being born again. So anyway, uh, now we go on to the seventh question. What are the seven? These are the seven planes of existence. And, uh, you know, from the Buddhist point of view, where the mind uh, can take rebirth. And those are the human realm, the animal realm, the realm of spirits or the hungry ghosts in hell realms, heaven realms, the realms of fine form and the four immaterial planes. Uh, I'm not going to go into that because that's, uh, you know, you, you can you can look that up and uh, uh, you know, read about it. It's, it's too difficult to explain uh, in the short time that we have. But I'm just saying that the, even those other ascetics, they wouldn't be able to answer all of those uh, questions. And then what are the, the eight, the eight worldly conditions and what drives the world and keep, keeps us creating a karma is pleasure and pain, gain and loss, praise and blame, fame and ill repute. So these things are what affects people's lives and, and you know, drive their, their lives. Uh, these uh, these what are called the eight worldly dhammas or the eight worldly conditions. Almost all of our, you know, especially the problems that we have in life is based on getting attached to these 
dualities. And then this next one, what are the nine, the nine abodes of sentient beings? And this is more difficult to understand, but basically it means they're similar to the planes of uh, existence. So there's the, you know, the plane, you know, if you read that, I'm not going to go through that because it's, it's really, it's kind of difficult to explain. Uh, but anyway, it's the human realm, the animal realm, people with uh, bodies and uh, but with different perceptions. And then the rest of them, the eight of them refer to the the jhanas, the be the beings that are reborn into the jhana realms, the Brahma realms, depending on the first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, and the four immaterial realms. Those are those uh, eight abodes of beings. That means where people can be reborn according to what kind of body and perceptions they have. Now, it's very complicated. You know, even reading it will probably make your head spin. Uh, but basically, uh, you know, only somebody like the Buddha could really understand and know how people are reborn into those various realms. Uh, according to the comma, it's all about uh, the comma. And then the <clears throat> and again with all of those different things, the Buddha repeated after each one of those. Uh, That with the complete transcending of all these different things, uh, or becoming completely disillusioned, dispassionate, and freed regarding these ten things, seeing their limits and fully comprehending them, a person makes an end of suffering in this very life. Now, actually, the tenth one, the tenth group, are the ten unwholesome actions. And this basically are the uh, what we read about in, uh, in the body, speech, and mind, the ten ways we create karma through the body, speech, and mind, uh, the, the negative actions of killing, stealing, and sexual misconduct are the three uh, wrong actions we do with the body. And then false speech, malicious speech, harsh speech, and uh, useless speech are the four negative actions or types of speech uh, that we create negative karma with. Uh, and then the three of mind, covetousness, ill will, and wrong views are the three negative actions uh, done by the mind. So basically, these cover all of the, the uh, our karmic actions uh, through the body, speech, and mind. The ten, there's ten wholesome actions, and then there's the ten unwholesome uh, actions. You know the opposites of of those, and uh, that's what you know we are doing our whole life. Either we're we're cultivating those unwholesome actions, causing us more suffering, or we're cultivating the wholesome actions that lead our mind eventually out of the web of, of suffering. So, so at the end of the sutta, the Buddha says, uh, uh, again, becoming completely dis dis disillusioned, dispassionate and freed regarding these 10 uh, things, these questions, Seeing their limits and fully comprehending their meaning, a person makes an end of suffering in this very life. That's what I said, that's what he said, and this is why the Buddha had said that. So, and so in all these questions, really we can see that it contains the, the kind of the gist you could say, or the essence of the, the teachings of the Buddha, about the nature of the suffering and nature of mind, 
and uh, and how it's through not understanding uh, these these things like the, the three feelings, name and form, the five aggregates, the four foods, uh, the uh, five aggregates, the six senses, uh, and and the others. That that's why people's lives continue to uh, uh, stay bound and uh, deepen themselves into the web of delusion and and suffering. So I just wanted to, uh, I selected this sutta just to kind of give you a kind of a different way that the Buddha, you know, talked about uh, the Dhamma and how, how clever and deep that the Buddha was in enabling to talk about the Dhamma in so many uh, different uh, ways and especially even like talking to these these groups of ascetic uh, monks who because uh, a lot of people you know they just say oh I just want to meditate I just want to sit down concentrate on my breathing get some peace of mind and they think that's all there is to uh, meditation or the or the whole purpose of Dhamma but it's uh, you know it's much deeper than that uh, and without developing this kind of wisdom and understanding, then one probably will not be able to develop the kinds of insights and especially, uh, you know, through the Buddhist uh, way of uh, developing the, you know, reaching the four levels of, uh, of liberation that we, you know, already talked about quite a bit and developing the, you know, the insight knowledges and weakening uh, the sense of self. So, having said that much, I hope that some of you are able to at least read through this beforehand. And if anybody has any questions on any of those, uh, we can see if there's any uh, questions. Let me see. There's in the, in the chat. Looks like there's a few questions. Uh, I sent that link out in my uh, in the, the mailing I sent out. Is this analysis knowledge the only way to achieve nibbana? Do jhana attainments, including formless jhanas, without any analysis? Through yogic concentration result in nibbana too. Uh, no, if if one just understood the basic, you know, could follow the sati, but the four foundations of mindfulness. If all of, if all you did was to read and understand and be able to meditate on the four foundations of mindfulness doing them in the in the right order as well as you know other the, the main teachings understanding the uh, the five aggregates and so on uh, and uh, the ability to develop at least the, the level of the, the first or second jhana one would be able to uh, probably uh, you know reach most of those levels of enlightenment but not uh, the formless jhanas no the formless jhanas uh, wouldn't be necessary uh, to attain Nibbana because a lot of the Buddhist monks didn't were not able to attain formless jhanas uh, but they you know most of them as I already mentioned before uh, when we read the seven factors of enlightenment and the uh, four foundations of mindfulness one attains jhanic levels uh, through practicing the four foundations of mindfulness and especially the uh, you know, the you know, going through all of those uh, four foundations of mindfulness helps to develop mindfulness and concentration, and then developing the enlightenment factors in the fourth foundation of mindfulness, Dhamma Nupasana, uh, and uh, 
where it is needed to attain uh, the, the jhanic level. But again, there's a misunderstanding of what jhana is. People think it's just meditating on one object and getting absorbed. That's not necessarily true. They forget about the vipassana jhana. You can attain, attain jhana through the practice of mindfulness because you have to be aware of the five hindrances. You have to be mindful of the five hindrances and you have to know how to overcome them. Uh, and when you overcome the five hindrances, you attain that first level of uh, uh, the jhana. It means the mind that's resting in the present moment, not distracted, uh, but you can observe things coming and going. It's through that first jhana concentration that you can uh, very clearly uh, see arising and vanishing uh, and to develop that moment to moment concentration and seeing how, uh, you know, the mind operates and to develop the insights into anicca, dukkha and eventually uh, anatta. Uh, now, there's some teachers that will teach you that just by going through the jhanas and attaining, uh, but you have to uh, go through the formless jhanas. If you want to uh, attain Nibbana through the, uh, the, just the practice of jhana, then you have to, according to the text, you have to also attain the formless jhanas, even up to the level of Niroda Samapati. Uh, and uh, that's much, 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 much more difficult than developing insight, developing concentration through through the four foundations of mindfulness. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, so anyway, that's, there's very few people, uh, you know, probably c c can do it that way. That, and also, you know, the four foundations of mindfulness is, also going to be much more practical for your daily life too. The ability to just to attain jhanas and come out doesn't prepare you to uh, be in your day-to-day -day life, go through your day-to-day -day life with, uh, you know, mindfulness that you get through the practice of, of mindfulness and the four foundations of mindfulness. Anyway. Uh, So, it uh, looks like that's the uh, end of the questions. Uh, anybody have any last questions uh, about uh, that sutta? Okay, so if not, then uh, we'll go ahead and take a, a short break. And then come back and uh, question on a few uh, exercises and then uh, our meditation practice. Okay, so we'll see you back in a few minutes.
Uh, Do people see my screen? They can see your screen. Yeah. I don't know. This... They definitely can see your screen. Okay. Yes, I'm yeah. David. Can see you. Okay. I can see Adisa. Mm Can people hear me? Yes, Banker. Yes. Okay, go ahead and uh, start to stand straight. Relax your arms at the side. Gently close your eyes. Begin some deep, slow breathing. Breathing in, hold the air in your lungs a few seconds. Allow all the oxygen to get out into the bloodstream and slowly breathe out. <clears throat> Feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Take a few more deep, slow breaths like that, cultivating this mindfulness. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, standing here and now. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, Standing here and now. Now we'll combine this breathing with these movements. On the next in breath, raise the arms over the head, interlock the fingers, stretch the head back, stretch the arms up, stretch upwards. And release your fingers and the out breath, arms back to the sides. <clears throat> Keep your attention focused on the movements of the body and the sensations. Again, in breath, hands over the head, interlock the fingers, stretch up, bend back a little bit, feel the sensation. Release the fingers outward. Once more in. And hold the upward stretch longer, bend back a little more through the arch of the spine, through the sensation. Release the fingers, out breath, hands back to the sides, close the eyes, and focus in on the body. 
Feel the clothing touching the outer skin, feel the subtler life force sensations under the skin. Feel the head balanced on top, the arms at the side, feet pressing the floor. Present moment of the body, Just remind yourself of standing, standing, standing. Letting go of your thoughts, Just let your thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Take the sensations of the breathing, standing body in the front of the awareness. In the next end breath, lift up on the toes while raising the arms over the head. In this way, facing the hands toward each other, stretch up. Out breath, come back down. Use the in-breath to help lift up the body. Stretch. Out. Once more, in. Close the eyes, keep feeling the body, feel the subtle life force vibrations. Just keep remembering standing, standing, standing. This present moment, body centered awareness. Next, we'll do the side bendings on the in-breath, raise both arms up, keep your fingers and arms straight, close to your head. On the out-breath, bend over the right side, keeping the arms parallel to each other like railroad tracks. In-breath, lift up. On the other side, out-breath. Mm -hmm. To the right, out breath. Mm -hmm. Out. Mm -hmm. Once more to each side. The out breath lower both arms, close the eyes, keep feeling the body. With each exercise, you feel more sensations in different places. Remember standing, standing, standing.
And next we'll do the squatting or the knee bending. On the next in breath, lift up on the toes and raise the arms up front for balance. On the out breath, bend the knees, lower down into the squatting position, balancing on the balls of the feet if you can. And take a deep breath, feel the muscles in the legs pushing the body up. On the toes, in out breath, lower down. In breath up. Out. The out breath, relax. Feel the increased heartbeat of the pulsation. Feel the outline of the body in the mind's eye. Clothing touching the outer skin by force vibrations, pulsations under the skin. Feel the eyes in the socket. Feel the outline of the body. Standing, standing. You now <clears throat> spread your legs apart about three feet. And we'll do the twisting from right to left. Holding the arms out at the sides. If you're not able to hold the arms out at the sides, you can keep your hands kind of on the, your hips and do the twisting you know, with the hands on the hips. But if you can, hold the arms out. We'll breathe in. in. The out breath twist to the right. Keep the eyes focused on the hand going back. In breath back to the front. Let your feet turn with the body and twist to the left. The next out breath. In breath front. Just continue alternating sides. Out breath. Once more to each side. Close the eyes, feel each foot pressing the floor. Feel the clothing touching the skin. The other sensations.
Now we'll do the backward and forward bending, keeping the legs apart with your hands to touch the front of the legs. And breathe in. On the out breath, bend forward, let your hands slide down to your kneecaps the first time. Keep your head lifted up, looking out straight ahead, try to flatten the spine, keeping the legs straight. In breath, lift up. Move your hands under the buttocks for support. Let the head go back on the out breath, gently bend backwards. Keep the eyes open, look at the ceiling, through the arch of the spine. In breath, carefully lift up. On the next out breath, let the hands come below your knees. So keep the head up, legs straight. Do the extra stretch in the back of the legs. In breath, lift up. In the back bend, just be careful. In breath, lift up. Third time, let the hands come down as far as you can towards your ankles or feet. Then hold on as far down as you can reach. Try to keep the legs straight. Let the little bones in the lower spine stretch out. Feel all those sensations. Lift up on the in breath. And once more, the back bends, be careful. In breath, lift up. On the out breath, relax your shoulders and arms, the sides. Close the eyes, feel the outline of the body, feel all those body sensations, clothing touching the outer skin, heartbeat pulsations, other sensations under the skin. Feel the outline of the body exactly as it is. All the subtle vibrations. It's the present moment, body centered awareness. Okay, now bring your legs back closer together. One last, two last exercises, the head and neck exercises, and standing straight. On an in-breath, turn your head to the right. Look over your right shoulder. On the out-breath, turn your head all the way back to the left. And look over the left shoulder. You have a stiff neck, just be careful. In breath, back to the right. Out breath, left. In right. Out. 
Once more to each side. On the in breath, let the head stop in the center, Just keep the eyes closed, feel the whole body move. One last head and neck exercise. On an end breath, lift your chin up. Kind of look up toward the ceiling and on the out breath, stretch the head further back to look up at the ceiling over the head. In breath, carefully lift the head up. On the out breath, kind of jet the chin out and press the chest to the, the chin to the notch at the top of the chest. Stretch the neck vertebra. In breath, lift the chin up and back. Lift the chin up, out breath, stretch the head back. In breath, hand up. Get out the chin, out breath, press the chin to the chest. Once more, in breath. Out breath. In breath, lift the head. Out breath, press the chin to the chest. Chin up level on an in breath. Relax on the out breath. Keep the eyes closed. Feel the whole body. Try to feel that present moment awareness. Those life force vibrations. Try to feel or imagine as though you were standing on a vibrating machine. Feeling all those vibrations from the soles of the feet up to the top of the head. Feel the outline of the body as though you were looking into a full length mirror, just watching the body. Standing, breathing, sensation. Okay, so now let's come back to our Seats and get ready for the sitting.
Just get comfortable in your sitting position. To align your back and the back of your head in a straight line. Gently close your eyes. Sort of feel the outline of the sitting body in the mind's eye. Then begin taking some deep, slow breaths, developing this basic mindfulness of breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Hold a breath in a couple of seconds, breathing out, sitting here and now. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Breathing in, letting go of the past and future. Breathing out, sitting here and now. Breathing in, feeling the whole body. Breathing out, feeling the whole body. Now we're going to count the breaths from one to ten, develop a more continuous concentration on the breathing. I'll do the counting for you, just try to follow that with your Breathing and counting. <clears throat> so with the next in-breath, expanding in-breath, mentally count to one. Hold the air in the lungs for one second. And with the contracting out breath, also count to one. Feel the last bit of air go out of the lungs. Next in breath, two. Out breath, two. In three, out three, in four. Out four, in five, out five.
in six, out six, in seven, out seven, in eight, out eight, in nine, Out nine in ten out ten. Now discontinue the counting, let your breathing return to its uncontrolled, shorter, irregular rhythm. We continue to feel it. Just keep your attention focused on the movements of the abdomen, rib cage, and chest as it expands and contracts. Just knowing when the breath is coming in. And knowing when the breath is going out. You know it by feeling it. Feeling those raw sensations. As you try to notice and feel the sensations of the clothing touching the skin of the abdomen, rib cage, your chest, that expands and contracts. Try to notice the four phases of each breath cycle. The expanding in breath and the brief pause. The contracting out breath and the brief pause. During those brief pauses, we feel the outline of the sitting body Feel the subtle present moment vibration. Start to be like a scientist looking down through a microscope, observing the experiment of breathing. body lives off the breathing, drawing the fresh oxygen into the lungs, sending it out to all the cells of the body, the heartbeat, 
on the out breath and breathing out the carbon dioxide and other <clears throat> byproducts of respiration. You can add that kind of understanding the breathing to help you stay focused. You can make these brief mental reminders to help stay alert and remember. Just in, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting, in, in, sitting, out, out, sitting. It's the ongoing continuous present moment of this body, sitting and breathing. It's cultivating mindfulness and concentration in this breathing body. Letting go of your thoughts. Just let the thoughts come and go in the back of the mind. Just keep the sensations of the breathing body in the front of the awareness. As though you were just watching the body, sitting and breathing. With the eye of awareness. Present moment awareness. In, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting. Breath by breath. Moment by moment. In, in, sitting, out, out, sitting, it's 
Start to notice more subtler details, sensations. in the breathing process. Start to notice how each breath is different, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. Sometimes it's an easy breath, sometimes a difficult breath. Sometimes the pauses between the breaths are longer or shorter. To be able to notice all those changes requires deep mindfulness and concentration. If you still have lots of thoughts going through the mind, come back and take, do some deep, slow breathing. Bring the mind back into the body. Keep it focused on breathing in, sitting. <coughs> breathing out, sitting. And while being focused in the breathing body, you can notice other sensations coming and going in the body, in or around the breathing. Itchy sensations, body movements, aches or pains. Breathing is always there in the center. The 
the mind is still enough, just open up to the flow of impermanence, to feel more and more sensations coming and going. We're noticing any thoughts moving through the back of the mind. If you know what the five aggregates are, just try to identify the aggregates as they come into the mind. This is material form. This is pleasant or painful feeling. That is perception. This is wanting or volitional activities, thoughts. This is ego consciousness. You catch yourself lost in thoughts, 
Recognize it as loss, loss. Take a deep, slow breath. Bring the mind back into the body. Back to in, in, sitting. Out, out, sitting. Breath by breath. Moment by moment. Keep turning up the power of the mental microscope to notice more and subtler sensations, sounds or thoughts arising and vanishing. Noticing how quickly all those five aggregates are continually changing.
Breathing in, sitting. Breathing out, sitting. So many different body sensations coming and going. Pleasure or pain come and go. Perceptions, thoughts. Sounds come and go. Thoughts of I, me, and mine come and go. These are all just a continuous flow, and change of name and form, the five aggregates, the six senses, arising and vanishing moment by moment in their nature of impermanence. To see that, to comprehend that, to comprehend the meaning of that. It's the practice of the Vipassana, Awareness. To understand the Four Noble Truths. This is suffering, this is the cause of suffering. This is the cessation of suffering. This is the way leading to the cessation of suffering.
of body and mind in this world. When one sees this with the eye of wisdom, one becomes disenchanted with suffering. This is the path to freedom. And may the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. In this way may all beings live with mindfulness and wisdom. And thus spoke the Buddha. Now to finish this meditation, I invite you to join in chanting the word sadhu three times slowly. We do that chanting on a long out breath. So if you like, you can place your hands together at the chest, take a deep breath. Sadhu Breathe Sadhu Place your hands at the edge of your knees. Take one more deep breath. As you breathe in, stretch the head back. Pull the hands on your knees to arch your spine backwards. And on an in-breath, lift the head up. And on the out-breath, press the chin to the Top of the chest, stretch the neck vertebra. The in breath, lift the chin up level. And the out breath, relax. Put a smile on your face. Okay.
friends, so I hope you're able to have uh, some moments or minutes or longer of some peaceful uh, present moment awareness, some insights into impermanence or no self. So, during the week, try to keep up your meditation practice, especially try to do the M&Ms every hour, or as often as you can, to pause what you're doing, to take a deep breath, bring your mind back to the present moment, letting go of that push to the future, touching base with the breathing body. Okay. Yeah. So be well, be safe, be mindful, be wise. And Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Good Have a good night. Thank you, Bande.